Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's all stand as we sing Sabbath rest, Sabbath rest. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? Yes. I want to welcome you to our worship service day on April 13. Am I correct? Yes. I want to welcome you. Um, today we have a special day lined up for you. I call this, you may be seated. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, I, I, I call this a celebration. Sabbath. And what call celebration Sabbath? Do I need to use a all right? This is better. Why I call it a celebration Sabbath is because today's communion and celebrating the sacrifice that Jesus did for us, remembering what he did for us. But also today we have a baptism. So I'm excited about that, celebrating folks giving their heart to God. So I'm not sure what happened to you this week. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the challenges that you might have had, what you're going through this, you have gone through this week. But I'm going to encourage you. Let's just celebrate today. Let's worship God today. And we welcome you and we hope you may enjoy the, uh, the service today announcement uh, I want to make. The first is regular, our 2024 theme, I want to remind you, is reach. We are reaching this year. And we are reaching up, we are reaching in, we are reaching out. We are reaching up to God. Make sure nothing is more important than your devotional life with God. That connection is what's going to give you the fuel to go on every single day. And we're reaching in, loving each other, connecting with each other. If you were around last Sabbath, we had Connection Sabbath. I hope you're part of a life group. If you're not, talk to me, talk to some um, pastor, someone else, and we hopefully will get you connected. But we're reaching in. Reach out to someone, one of your brothers, sisters inside. Reach out and connect. And then... We are reaching out. 
We are reaching out to the community. And you, the, you, there's a card that we, we've had in the back and that you should have by now written down the names of people that you really want God to, to help you minister to this year. Write those names down, pray over those names and help us to reach this year as we try to be um, disciples of God. The next announcement that we have is on every third Sunday, and the next Sunday is April 21st, we have the Revive Us Again Prayer Summit. That's when we come together. The prayer ministry team does a wonderful job, and we come Sunday morning from 6 to 10 and pray and open the word, and we put things before God, and miracles happen. So I'm going to encourage you to come out and pray with the church. And the, the, the next thing is, while they're pulling up the next announcement, I want to make this one. It's not on the, um, on the screen, but if you are a part of this church and you might be a part of some of the WhatsApp chat, whether ministry chat or informational chat that we might be part of, we've had a breach recently where a number of us have been getting calls from strangers um, asking for uh, to send money, getting calls from people that we thought were people we knew, but they hacked into their WhatsApp and asking for funds. I'm going to encourage you. One of the things they, they asked for, put the code in. Here's a code. Put that code in. But you don't want to do that. That's going to completely transfer your phone over to them. I'm going to ask you, if you get, if you're part and you got those messages, this is important. Do not respond do not put any codes in do not send any money to someone asking unless you call and find out that is that same person really reaching out to you very important and uh so just to protect yourself and then um if you want more information about what's happening at this church the news calendar when it's Bible study, more, all that stuff. If you're looking for Bible study, you're looking for prayer, please text 411 to our line, 954-388-8780. And you'll be connected into our church platform and be able to get information. And if you want more information, there's a, a QR code there. You can scan it. You can get access to our website. There's so many things that we do. As a matter of fact, I myself can't keep up with a lot that we're doing. So scan, you can get information and you can see what's happening and you can participate. I want to end by just reminding you that we are here. And you're not here whether you're online or you're in person. You are not here by chance. You are here because God has ordained it so that you're here. Let's worship God today. Let's stay in this moment. Let's celebrate. Let's give God the praise today. Thank you. Things are different today because of communion. So let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for allowing us to be here. Now we invite your presence. May the service go as you would have it. And may we be touched. And I ask one thing, Lord. Accept our worship. Accept our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, they say they're audibles in football, right? So we'll do the audible here. All right. So we do have some folks transferring out. Um, and we have to do the reading of this name. I think this is the first reading, right, Mozart? This is the second reading of the transfer out. Thank you. Uh, uh, Celia Casey. 
uh, Dexter Thomas and is it Elizabeth uh, Godhart, Hugh Rowe, Fernanda Alves, one of our former teachers, uh, Ken Katane uh, Jr., sorry, Daniel Fabian, Elizabeth, and Jemima Desir. Desir. They've been here for years and now they're, they've moved on to Central Florida. Jordan McCullough, Nessa Cohen, and Winsome Thorpe. And that's our second reading for these names. Do I take a vote? Yeah, no. I'm being told no not to take a vote today. So, all right. And then uh, that's it. Do we have any transfer ins? No transfer ins. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. We have made it through yet another week. God is good, amen? amen. Through everything, through the highs, through the lows, God continues to be constant. He continues to be faithful. And when we cling close to the cross, we can find so much peace. We can find so much rest. We can find so much joy in him. So I ask you to stand as we praise God, as we sing this hymn. May you think about how good God has been to you and how, you have, how he has proven that when you stay close, close to the cross, he will give you the peace and the rest that you need.
wonderful, merciful Savior. There is none like our Savior. Who would have thought that a lamb would rescue the souls of men?
can the church say amen? amen? He is the one that our hearts always hunger for because he gives the healing and the grace. It's prayer time. And um, I'm impressed to read Isaiah 49 verse 13 that says, Sing, O heavens. Sing, O heavens. Be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains. Why? For the Lord has comforted his people, and he will have mercy on the afflicted. He will have mercy on the afflicted. How can you sing and be joyful when you're being afflicted? How could we sing and be joyful when you need to be comforted because you're in mourning? So um, last week was a last weekend. This time Sabbath was an impactful time for me because I attended the funeral of um, our dear uh, Sylvia's Brown sister, Grace, passed away, and it was a beautiful service. And at the end of the service, they had a video playing of Grace dancing with her father, her late father. And they were dancing and dancing and they just looked so happy, young, vibrant. And I just thought it was just a few years ago that this happened. And now both of them are gone. And as a family, that's sort of like a tragedy. That's a loss. And I, I left there and I said, you know, life is here now and then it's gone and you have this empty and this loss and how can you be joyful and praise God? And as I was... Um, there after that I, I had to prepare for life group and I had something else and I was just led to Ruth and Naomi that story and that story you're talking about the father who passed the two sons passed leaving just those women tragedy and I don't know who has experienced loss like that a tragedy it may not be death but it may be something else and the text is saying, be joyful. How could you be joyful? How could you sing? I want to encourage you today. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, and if you have your prayer cards and a burden on your heart to come forward, the reason that we can sing is because what the words of that song says. Because if we can hold on to God, He will give us the healing. He will bring us the joy. He will bring us all of that. And the text says Ruth clung on to Naomi because she didn't really know God, but she knew the God of Naomi. And she knew Naomi. I'm going to ask you today to cling on to the promises of God that He will be there for you. He will heal you. So if you have your prayer requests and you have something on your heart you want to bring before God and you want to come forward so you can cling on to that promise and that hope, Please come forward as we prepare our hearts for prayer now. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you now. And we were, we first want to say, oh God, thank you for all of your mercies and grace and promises and, and your goodness, Lord. Because even when we don't deserve it you are there 
even when we shut you out and we go our own way, do our own thing, not even seeking you or connecting with you, you still patient with us and you leave the door wide open that we can walk right, right through it, Lord, to come back to you. So there, Father, we want to thank you for how you strengthen us in the times when we're weak, how you are patient and give us grace the time when sin abounds, the times when we don't know where to go, you give us clear direction. We thank you for that, Lord. And there, Father, right now we come before you and we want to say, have mercy on us. There's some of us that are mourning. There's some of us that are grieving. There's some of us that are, uh, are grieving loss, not of um, someone as by way of death or so, but lost because of a broken relationship. We're, we, we're grieving because of a disconnection or a loss of a job or a, um, a, a loss of an opportunity that you thought you were going to have. And Lord, we, we want to be joyful, but we don't have it in us right now. I pray, God, that you will remind us of your promises. Remind us that when all is down, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but you'll always be there with us. Remind us that when everything is gone and we don't have any strength to go any further, you will mount us on eagles' wings and carry us to where we need to be, Lord. Remind us of that. And there, Father, we want to thank you for the blessings that you're provided for us. There are some that are here that have a testimony. This morning we heard some testimonies, and I'm sure there are more where, where you can't stop praising God for opening up doors that were closed, for pouring out a blessing. We were worried about how we're going to make ends meet, but you just provided for us miraculously on time, just in the nick of time Lord so dear father we want to thank you for that now even as we thank you for that we want to pray for our young people some of us as parents and 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 and, and aunts and grandparents we worry about our young whether they are going to school or they're just starting the career or or they're being influenced and pulled in different direction Lord I pray you put a hedge around our young people I pray that you, you'll give them wisdom and help us to guide them and, and protect them from all harm and danger. And there, Father, I, I also pray for our marriages. The devil seemed to always want to attack marriages because if he breaks up the home, he is breaking up the church. So I ask, Lord, that you will strengthen those marriages that right now are seeking you and saying, we don't know where this is going to go. Please, Lord. And there, Father, I want to pray for the one who will break the word today. I pray for Pastor, that you would, that you'll give him the words. And that we will leave here knowing that we heard a message from God. And all in the end, Lord, we will leave here singing, rejoicing. Not because everything is perfect, not because all our pain is gone. But because we have the promise that you deliver, the promise that you're coming back again, and the promise that your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are the one that we pray. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Keep welcome, welcome to Communion Sabbath. 
um, I wanted to share a brief word with you about communion. And I know that when a pastor says brief, it is often a lie, but I am not lying, <laughs> a brief word. But before we do that, I'm sure some of you might have heard about the situation in Haiti with the orphanage that we sponsor here. And so we just wanted to bring up Sister Jessie to kind of update us on what's going on. And uh, just very quickly in about just five minutes, she had, uh, she had some words to share. So we're going to give her some time here. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting me. Thank you, church. It's mostly a thing to um, rem rem uh, remind you to thank you for your support. May you can play the, uh, the slide for your support for the children in Haiti. Many of you ask me how they're doing, how is their safety. I want to show transparency. Our children are fine. They have food. They have safety. They go to school. God is an awesome guy. <laughs> These are the children in DR. We have six children in DR. And uh, those are the ones have two in medical school. They are in fourth year medical school. Ridlin and Akia. So they're doing well also with everything going on in Dominican Republic. But I want to just now make sure to let you know, first is God. Without God, it will not be visible. Secondly, is your donation, your dedication to help these children. And third, the prayers. So we need prayers. We need your financial support to continue. They will not be exist. They will not be alive without your support. So please, for my heart, on their behalf, I want to say thank you. Continue financially to support these children. We are changing lives one day at a time. They are well. They are well fed. And you can see the food. They are eating well. And they are very happy. Thank you once again for your support and your prayers. So before I'm done, I felt compelled this afternoon to pray, to dedicate Haiti as a whole and the children in Haiti right now. In your heart, with me, in unity, let's pray together secretly and I will leave my children in Haiti. Thank you so much. Father in heaven, you are a great God. We want to lift you up for your mercy, your grace, and being so faithful toward our children. We lift up Haiti in a whole and you, Lord. May you do for Haiti what only you can do. Continue to bless those who are in need. Continue to open doors for those orphans who all the year is just like nothing to give them hope. But they have hope in you. We lift you up. We thank you for so many years we've been taking care of them. And for you continue to bless them. We lift you up, Lord. We thank you. We magnify your name. We praise you. For you, a God, is God alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Sister Jessie. And it's amazing how the Lord is able to work, even in these really uh, dicey situations that we can find ourselves in. But moving, moving on, I just wanted to share a little quick word with you guys about communion. Today is communion Sabbath. For those of you that might not know, it's why all the men uh, or all the deacons are dressed in white and red. Um, and you see all these women running around in all white. And it is because communion Sabbath. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it because even though we do communion every so often, um, it is possible that we might not even understand why it is we do communion or what even is communion. And uh, if you're like me, when I was growing up and I was taking communion, my favorite part was the little cracker. And I, you know, I used to say, I, I used to always go to the kitchen after church. This is not a joke. I used to go to the kitchen after church and look where they would put these crackers. Because I was like, where are they getting them from? And my hope was to take the leftovers and eat them. And uh, they never, I never found them. So, I, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm a pastor. To this day, I don't know where they come from. I, I don't know what, where they get these crackers. They just appear. But whatever. The, the point is... Um, 
So you get the little cracker. You drink the little grape juice, which is the wine, right? And you say, wow, that was a fun time. But you might not understand why we do it. Why are we doing communion? As a matter of fact, every single time we do communion, it's normally me, by the way, since I've been here, I always read a set of verses. Which, who here knows the verses I read? Like just the, just the, like the, the reference. You don't, even know, you don't need to repeat the whole thing. Do you even know where it comes from? Some of, you can say it. First Corinthians? No, it's not 10. <laughs> it's not 1 Corinthians 10. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 11. All right, you were close. <laughs> chapter 11, verses 23 and 26. And I always read it every time. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on that night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we read those verses over and over. But did you know that that set of verses in the context that it was put in was actually a reprimand? Did you know that when Paul wrote that, he wasn't, he wasn't, he didn't write that for us today to use in communion. He was speaking to the people in, in Corinth, and he was reprimanding them about the way that they were doing communion. And it's, it's pretty evident, even in the text, in verse 17, it says, But in the following instructions, I do not commend you. Because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. Yikes. <laughs> for in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I believe it in part. For there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. Ouch. But I think in this, we start to gain an understanding of what communion is for and why we do it today. Because communion is certainly a tool that we use to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. Absolutely. I mean, Jesus himself said it, right? Do this in remembrance of me. But even more than that, communion is a time that is meant to bring us together as a family, as a church family, as a body of God. And this is not just something that Kevin came up with, yeah? We find this in Corinthians verse, chapter 10, like Alex just said. In Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, Paul says, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake in one bread. Guys, when we do communion today in a couple minutes, and first we're going to have a baptism, amen for that. But when we do communion today, I don't want you guys to just eat the bread and like me wonder where it comes from to eat more. When you eat the bread or the little cracker and you drink the little juice, I want you to think about how much Jesus went through so that we can all be one body. So that we can all be together under his name. Because it doesn't matter where you're from, what color your skin is, where you grew up. It doesn't even matter 
what you have done over the course of your life. What matters is at some point, you accepted that Jesus died for you. And now we are here. That is the true meaning of communion. That is why we do it, so that we never forget what Jesus Christ did for us. That's the point, guys. So I'm going to end with what it says here. Right after we finish the whole communion verses that we use, in verse 27, it says this. Well, in verse 28, let's read verse 28. It says, Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning, the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. And while that might sound scary, I want you guys to keep in mind that this is what it was intended for. When you eat, reflect on Jesus. Reflect on your family, on your friends, on the people sitting in the pews right next to you. And when you get out of here, spend some time with someone. That's what I'm going to leave you with. When you're done with the communion service, don't just get up and dash out. Or like me, go to the kitchen. After, after, after you're done with communion service today, I want you to just pick one person that you don't normally talk to and just ask them about themselves. That's it. Make a friend. Yeah? I think we can do that today. So with that in mind, see, I promised you it would be short. Let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's, let's bring up the, the baptismal candidates, everybody. Come on in. There they are. We have... Uh, Rose, we have Jeremiah, and Rachel. Alec, come on up. You're welcome. Thank you, Pastor Kev. And, and, and let me say something real quick. Th this man right here, you guys might not know it, but this man is a machine. <laughs> this, this man is a, a baptizing machine. Okay? <laughs> it's the truth. When Jesus said... I'm going to make you a fisher of men. He, this, guy, this guy's not a fishing rod. He's a net. <laughs> okay? He's God doing the good. work of God here. Good, everybody. So again, it's a very high day in the house of the Lord today, not only because it's communion service, which Jesus instituted, but also because of baptism. Jesus said, you must be born again of water and of the Spirit if you are to enter the kingdom of God. And today... Three individuals, um, first is Rose Sanderson, and then two fine, precious children that have studied with Barbara Samuels um, are, have requested baptism. So the first will be um, our good friend, Rose Sanderson. If you know Rose, if you're in the baptismal study, if you just want to get a better experience um, visually, visually, feel free to come on up right here, all right? and um, be closer to, to Rose. So, Rose was born in the capital city of Kingston, Jamaica. She grew up in the Baptist church near her home, and she'd go to church every Sunday. Rose was involved in the youth group. She was involved in the youth Bible studies. She went out in the community and invited other youth to come to church. When Rose was about 18 years old, the church had a crusade, and Rose gave her life to Christ. But unfortunately, while Rose was in her early 20s, there was a major rift in the church that caused her to leave. Trust was lost. Rose stopped going to church. But years later, Rose came to America, and she started going to church with her best friend from childhood, this made her realize that she had been missing the spiritual component of her life. It, was, it wasn't easy for Rose to decide which church to attend because she was struggling whether to, as to whether to worship God on the Sabbath, Saturday, or on Sunday, the way she had been brought up. But just before the pandemic... Rose's co-worker, Terry Gosling, and I hear there were other people involved, invited her once again to attend the Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
This time Rose actually came and she was inspired. However, the pandemic put a hiatus on her in-person attendance. And, and in April of 2023, Rose decided that 2023 was going to be the year she would come back to church physically, come back to God. By September, Rose, Rose had a turning point. She decided she could no longer walk this road alone. She needed to walk with God. So she made a promise to God that she would come back to his church, that she would get baptized, and that she would serve him. Today, by the grace of God, Rose fulfills her promise. Rose's gift is to serve the elderly. She plans to work for God by providing care for seniors. There is a place in her heart for the gray-haired among us. Rose Sanderson, our good friend. Okay, Rose, because you love Jesus, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we get ready for Rachel, Rachel, right? As we get ready for Rachel, I'm so excited, church family. Um, these children are my children. I just didn't give birth to them. Um, just to know, uh, when you spend time with kids and you realize the, what do you call it, the, the, the love that they have for God, Rachel. Rachel Evans will be seven years old. In 11 days, she's currently homeschooled through Con Connection Academy. She was born to parents Richard and Wendy Evans on April 24, 2015, in Coral Springs, Florida. Her hobbies include soccer, singing, and gymnastics. Rachel wants to be a doctor or a veterinarian when she grows up. She loves helping people feel better. When asked why she wanted to get baptized, Rachel says she wants to get closer to Jesus and to go to heaven with him when he comes. Rachel says when she gets to heaven, right, she wants to ask Jesus how he was able to turn water into wine. And when, when asked about how she wants to serve in the church, she says she wants to teach people and to help people understand the word of God and be saved. Her favorite Bible verse is found in Psalms 150, verse 6, which says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. She says when she reads this verse, she imagines and sees every living thing on earth just praising God. And when she shared that with me, I got ghost bumps because I could see it through her eyes. Listen. Rachel want to say something special before she goes down. Always remember that Jesus loves you every time, anywhere. Okay. Rachel, because you love Jesus, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. baptismal class if you want to come up to support Rachel and Jeremiah you can you can come if we're, if the kids are here there are over 10 kids that are in our baptismal class 
So the next is, is Jeremiah. Jeremiah Evans. And Jeremiah is nine years old. He's currently homeschooled through the Connection Academy. Jeremiah was born to parents Richard and Wendy on January 12, 2015 in Coral Springs, Florida. His hobbies include cooking and karate. When he grows up, he wants to be a plant-based chef and I'm gonna taste the first dish. When asked why he wants to get baptized, he says he wants to connect with Jesus. Jeremiah says when he gets to heaven, he wants to ask God a couple questions. He wants to ask how he made people walk on water and how he was able to turn water into wine and how he was able to bring the dead back from the, the, the dead back to life. When asked how he wants to serve God, he says he wants to tell children the story of Jesus and to be a pastor to the adults. Jeremiah's favorite Bible verse is Matthew 4 verse 9. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He says this verse shows him to believe in God and to follow him and tell others about him. And Jeremiah also want to share. Hate has four letters, but so does love. Cry has three letters, but so does joy. Failure has seven letters, but so does success. So choose the brighter side of things, and God can help you do that. Well, Jeremiah, because you love Jesus, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I just want to say one thing. For those of us who have children in our audience and maybe wondering, these kids are young. I want to remind us, especially in a time like now, the enemy is after our children. He seeks to thwart their lives at an early age. A lot of the challenges we as adults face was started in our childhood. So when you give your life to God at an early age, I want to know that God says none who puts, none who has trusted him will he lose. I myself got baptized at nine, didn't know all of the things, but God has kept me. I want to encourage you, the time is short. God is calling us. And even now, you can still say yes. Yes, and before our singers have uh, one more song here, I just want to say if any of you have felt inspired by this and you want uh, or feel interested in baptism, come and talk to me or, or Alex or Barbara or any, any elder after the session, anybody wearing black and red or white, you can talk to them and they will connect you to the next steps. But uh, for now, uh, please stand for one, uh, one song and then we'll go into our foot washing. Let's all stand.
Supper or communion is often misunderstood because of the language Christians use to speak about it. Eating and drinking Jesus' body and blood? That may sound strange to people who are unfamiliar with the Lord's Supper, but hopefully this video can begin to clarify what this central Christian practice actually means. At the Last Supper, Jesus asked us to remember him in an interesting way. After giving thanks for his food, Christ broke and ate a piece of bread and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he drank from a cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus calls bread his body and grape juice his blood. The symbolism here is profound in its simplicity and power. By equating his flesh and blood with food and drink, he is proclaiming himself to be the sustenance of life itself. Just as life cannot be sustained without food, nor eternal life be sustained without Christ. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Communion is the act of remembering Christ's death, resurrection, and second coming, by eating bread and drinking grape juice. Communion reminds us that man cannot live by bread alone, and that spiritual food, the kind that Christ offers us, is just as vital as food and drink. During the Last Supper, Jesus also commanded us to do one more thing, to wash each other's feet. Even though he is the King of the universe, the world's Savior, and the all-powerful, Christ humbled himself beyond measure. At the Last Supper, Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. The Master of all performed the most honored of tasks, he dirtied his own hands and washed the filth of the day off his followers' feet. After Jesus finished this act of service, he said, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This act of foot washing is a clear indication of how Christ wants us to relate to one another. He wants us to humble ourselves, to perform any task for others, no matter how horrible or undesirable it might be. We are to put others first, just as he did. This bread, this wine, there are more than just symbols. Jesus said that this is his body, this is his blood, a new covenant for us, a new relationship between you and God. This Last Supper didn't take place sitting quietly in pews. There was no pinch of bread. No one took just a sip of wine. This was Passover. It was a celebration. This was a meal for the hungry and thirsty. It was for those whose bodies longed for that which sustains. They looked on with eagerness at Christ, who took the bread and wine, gave thanks. Even on the eve of his death, he said, This is me, my body broken, my blood spilled. I am the Passover lamb, not just for one people, for all people. My body in death can give life, and my blood is the blood that can save. Don't hesitate to take it. It's for you, for all who know they are sinners. Take it and die to sin. Heal your body with mine that was broken. Fill your heart with my blood poured out. And not just here, not just in these moments, but every time you gather, eat, and drink. Always give thanks and remember me.
taste and see that the Lord is good. He'll give you everything. He'll give you When I think of the cross, I think of the insults and the mockery that came from the crowd. I think of a painful 39 lashes and the excruciating pain from a thorn-filled crown. When I think of the cross, I, I think of brutal suffering and the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus willingly stepped into. You see, the greatest act of love is for the innocent to stand in place for the guilty. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he stood in place for you and me. It's what we call grace. And in a moment of grace, Far beyond anything that we could ever comprehend, Jesus took on all our anger, all our anxiety, all our brokenness, all our pain, all our past, every single mistake, all our shame. He took on all the things that we try to carry, but they're just so heavy. But Jesus didn't come just to simply take those things. He came to give us freedom. Because of him, you're no longer lost to your past. Because of him, you're no longer a slave to your shame. Because of him, you're no longer a prisoner to your pain. Because of him, you're no longer bound to your sin. Because of Jesus, we can actually take these things and lay them down at the foot of the cross. See, God's love has liberated us, you and me free to forever walk in the light of his amazing grace. skilled hands of a potter, clay takes a remarkable transformation. It is a humble substance, unassuming and formless. Yet in the hands of the potter, 
it becomes a medium of incredible potential. With each touch, the potter breathes life into the clay, coaxing it into shapes and forms that were previously unimaginable. The potter's hands possess a unique understanding of the clay. They have a profound sense of touch, able to discern its resilience and responsiveness. With patience and precision, the potter begins to shape the clay, molding it into vessels of beauty and functionality. There is an artistry in this process, a dance between the potter and the clay. With each stroke and twist, the potter guides the clay, bringing forth its hidden possibilities. The clay yields to the potter's touch, trusting in the vision and expertise that resides within those hands. But the journey of clay in the potter's hands is not without challenges. There are moments of pressure and stretching as the potter seeks to refine and strengthen the clay. In these moments, the clay may resist, Yet it is in these trials the true character emerges as imperfections are smothered away and the clay becomes resilient. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit and interactions we encounter that we are formed. Like clay, we must be pliable and open, willing to yield to the hands of the great potter. Life's challenges, though daunting, are opportunities for growth. The pressures and stretches we endure shape our character and strengthen our spirit. Just as the potter refines the clay, so too does adversity refine us, chiseling away our rough edges and revealing the true essence God intended for us. The great potter has crafted us with intention, imparting us with unique talents and gifts. It is our responsibility to embrace the shaping process, to trust in the wisdom of the potter's hands. So let us be clay in the potter's hands, yielding and open to transformation. Let us trust in the artistry of the potter, knowing that through his touch, we can become vessels of beauty and significance. And as we embrace this process, may we inspire others to recognize the joy that is in surrendering to the hands of the divine potter. The king has returned. The prophecies fulfilled. The years of longing are over. The king has returned. And now all will be made right. Amidst shouts of praise and tears of joy, the pleading for justice, the cries for our enemies' defeat. The king has returned. The king who was driven from his land as an infant, who spent his first years as a refugee, who understands pain, suffering. But this king is not who we were looking for. This king brings justice, not over our enemies, but in the midst of our enemies. He brings peace, not in our land, but in our souls. He is the answer to the prayer we did not know we were praying. The King has returned. Long live the King. The King is dead. The hand that once held a branch now gripped a hammer. The king is dead. This king of kings who embraced the very nature of a servant. This prince of peace broken for us. This commander of angels surrendered to a cross. This king joins us in our suffering empathizes in our weakness, and he calls us to die with him.
to lay down our lives, to live in surrender, that we may be fully alive. The king is dead. Long live the king. But this king is not gone forever. The story has not ended. There is a twist, a third act. There is a third day, and on that third day, the king will strip death of its power and extinguish the sting of Hades. This king is not defeated. This king is not destroyed. This king is the resurrection. He is the life. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The King has returned, leaving death behind, destroying hate, inviting us all to live in his victory, in his kingdom, in his peace. Yes, the king has risen. Long live the king.
The table is where life happens. It's where imagination runs wild. Where lessons are learned. And wonders are built. The table is where time can stop. Where wounds are comforted. And freedom begins. It's where we find peace. And we laugh till it hurts. The table is where we gather with family, new and old, to share stories. To nourish our bodies. To enrich our souls. The table is where we give thanks. And where we remember what great gifts we have been given. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Today, we are reminded of the sacrifice of our Savior. His body broken, his blood spilled, the weight of our sin crushing his shoulders. Today, we confess our unrighteousness we lay down our arrogance. We surrender in obedience at the foot of the cross. Today, we remember.
Welcome back, everybody. Now we will begin our communion ceremony, and I'd like to remind everybody in the building that this church practices open communion, so that means that even if you are not an Adventist or you are not whatever, if you want to be a part of this ritual, we invite you to do that along with us, okay? And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start with a word of prayer from our sister Angela. We thank you for the privilege that we have to gather together to be reminded of your amazing sacrifice, your sacrifice of your life, your broken body, the blood that was spilt, so that we have an opportunity to make right and stay right with you. We thank you, Lord, that this is a reminder but more importantly, when it comes to seeing you in your eternal glory, we will be able to celebrate in this manner. We pray, O oh God, for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as we gather together as brothers and sisters to make right with you and to make right with each other. We thank you and we praise you and we ask that your perfect will will be done as we worship you in this communion service. Amen. Now, um, we will begin the washing of our hands. Now, some of you may remember these couple of verses, but 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on that night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Now, Brother Paul will have a word of prayer for the communion meal. where we can humble ourselves once again at your feet, recognizing what you did for us over 2,000 years ago. And Father, we see our, our weaknesses, we see our flaws, we see our struggles and our challenges. But Lord, above all, we see Jesus. We, we feel the heart of Jesus working in our situation each and every day. And Lord, today we are, we are here because of what Jesus has done and what he continues to do in our lives and for our families every day. So Lord, we just want to surrender to you, especially in this moment, so that this experience will be meaningful and it will make an impact in our spiritual walk with you. Pray, Lord, that as these emblems are distributed, that it will serve as a reminder of how your body was broken. It was bruised, it was battered, it was beaten. You were mocked and derided because of our sins. But because of what you do, Lord, 
Today we can stand and we can lift our hands with joy because it's you and only you. We thank you so much for hearing and answering in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we will begin the passing out of the emblems. And I'd like to invite anyone, while we do this, you are welcome to give a testimony of something that God has been doing in your life or has done in your life. Short testimonies, right? 30 seconds, a minute around there. But um, we welcome you to participate in that part of the service as we pass out the emblems. We'll have, we'll have, uh, we have people ready with a mic. So if you have a testimony you want to share, just raise your hand and we'll have someone come to you. As every, uh, most people who know me here, I'm a nurse, and being a nurse is such a humbling experience. The fact that everyone in this room right now can see, can talk, can lift their hands, can touch somebody next to you, can hug someone, we are so blessed, and there's so much for us to be thankful for. So God is great. And you don't know how God is, how amazing God is until you're in those situations. So the minute that everyone in here should be so thankful, and that's all I need to say. Um, we'd like to remind you, you are welcome to give testimonies. We, are, we can sit here in reverent silence, but should any of you feel inclined to share, as the brother just did, we, we just remind you to raise your hand and we'll have someone come to you with the mic. So I feel like God has been showing himself in my life a lot lately. Um, I was going to drop out of, I just started college and I was going to drop out, but I didn't know if I should. And my mom, she kept telling me to tell, <laughs> to tell my dad. And I was too scared to tell my dad, but she was just like, oh, if you don't tell him, then he can't actually drop out. So when I went to tell him, he gave me some motivating words to try to stay in school, but I wasn't really gonna, I was gonna listen to him and stay in school, but I wasn't gonna try as hard. I was just gonna be like, okay, I'm still in school. If I pass, I pass. If I fail, I fail. Basically, 
when I got home, I got in, wait, when I went back home, because I called him. So when I went back home, I told him, and he was just like, oh. And he started, like, I got in trouble, basically. And I felt like that was God guiding me. I was like, okay. Like, he told me I can't do nothing no more. I just need to lock in, stay in school. Okay. So after that, I was like, all right. That, that's God guiding me to do something, stay in school, maybe my path. Like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but he's just telling me where I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I was really lost. Right now, my major is education, but I don't know what I'm doing with that because I don't want to be a teacher. So I was just struggling. And my dad was like, I need to make money because the economy is crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was really lost on what I'm supposed to do. And my mom is when she went back to school to be just, so she went to Kaiser, she's in Kaiser, and I go to a community college, and it's not helping me, like, nobody really cares there, it's a community college. So it's like, I'm struggling, time struggling, time struggling. So I went to my mom's school, and the lady there, she was just so helpful, she was like, I don't know why, but I think you should, I think you should change your major to radiology technology a radiology technician and it's like where you do x-rays and stuff and I like taking pictures not that that's what an x-ray is but <laughs> so I felt like that was like I just felt like because she said it once then she said it again then she said it again and I felt, I felt like God was like this is what you're supposed to do so at first, I was like, okay, I guess I'll change it. She was like, okay, we'll go in there and we'll just, you're going to go take the test right now. The test is a 50-question test with 12 minutes. How am I going to take a test? And, so I th and she said I had to get a 20 or I wouldn't be able to go into the program. So I went in there and I just prayed. I was like, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but just please guide me and help me. And he was like, I went in there and I got a 23 and I was just like, okay, like I just feel like God has been guiding me at the end of the day. And I start school on May 6th. Uh, we'll, we'll call the deacons forward and continue with our process, but there is absolutely more time for testimonies. I think, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think you, you had a testimony. <laughs> yeah, we can go ahead with the testimonies, guys. Keep them coming. Hi, everyone. My name is Abigail. I'm not a member here, but I was invited by the Michelle, I mean, um, the McLeod family. So I just want to give my testimony today about how God um, gave me patience and helped me to have faith in him and trust him throughout the process. So um, I'm a bit nervous because I'm not really used to talking in crowds, but so God has helped me. So I was working at Walmart for quite some time and I didn't, I would say that the environment was okay. I was working there for a little bit and I ended up losing my job. I lost my job and I was without a job for almost five months around that time. Throughout that time, I was depressed. I was sad. I lost all hope in God. But... I just want to say that God has really helped me. I applied for a position that I, I would never imagine seeing myself in. At first, I, was, I thought I was unqualified. And I thought I would not get the job because of how long I had to wait. 
a couple weeks back, um, I kept pushing and I called the company and I told them that, you know, I'm waiting for them to respond back to my emails and everything. So recently they called me and they told me that I got the job. This week, I completed an entire week of starting at that new job. And I just want to say thank you to God first and foremost for blessing me with this job. Because I don't know what I would do without having this job and God first and foremost. So that's my testimony. <laughs> doctor neurological no, neurological yeah you guys know what I'm saying but we went there and they told me that it was psychological or I was thinking it or something like that and I was just like oh my goodness God like what is happening like what is happening with my body I just didn't know what was happening so and it was very like it was all over the place we were all over the place so then we went to a cardiologist and we found out that I have vasovagal. It's a fainting disorder. So yes, I have a fainting disorder. And I just am thankful for God um, for like, I'm thankful for God for like giving me the answers. And um, yes, yeah. And now I know what to do to help me feel better. Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Winifred Burns, and I was so happy to be in the choral group for Easter Cantata. And um, I had a little accident while I was in the choral group. I uh, stepped backwards, and I fell down the three steps right there and through the door and hit my head on a chair. And everyone was just so kind and so right there with me and um, uh, some of the uh, young ladies saw to me and called the ambulance and and called my husband Eric and uh, the ambulance took me to the hospital and and uh, before we got here to uh, Florida I had taken a bone density scan and they told me I had osteoporosis and but when I got to the hospital and they took uh, a CT scan, uh, took x-rays. I didn't break anything. Praise God, I hadn't broken a bone in my body. And I, I had a big hematoma in the back of my head and I had a bruised coccyx. But that's it, I, I was very, he said, look, if you think you're hurting now, wait till tomorrow. And that was, I, I, I believe it. I was so sore, but God is good. And would you believe I sung on that stage the week after at the cantata? I said, I'm not, I am not uh, going to learn all this music for nothing. So I was here. I'm 76, and God is good. God is merciful. God is marvelous. Praise God. And, and that is my testimony. And I, I just, I praise him and I praise him because I could have died right there in that hallway. But I didn't break not one bone. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise his holy name. Amen.
Yes, no, maybe so. Hello, everyone. I'm Wendy and Rachel. I'm speaking on behalf of my daughter. Um, it's been a blessing having her when um, she was younger. She used to have um, it, she also had fainting spells. <clears throat> Um, but they called it something else. She would be in the house and she's crying and all you hear is thump. And I look, I'm like, where is she? She fell. So every time she cried, she cried for too long, she would thump and she'll fall out. And she'll pass out. And we didn't know what was happening. So we went to the doctor and the doctor is like, oh yeah, that's normal. Every child does it. I was like, no. You cry, you go, ah, ah, and you cry again. But when she cried and she held her cry for so long, <clears throat> she would pass out. Doctor said that she would get over it. And I'm here to say thank God she has. She has sickle cell. And she has... Um, I don't remember which one it's called, but it's not as severe. But pain has no age. And I can only pray. We can only pray every time she's going through that pain. Because only she and God knows what she's feeling. But we're here today to tell you that last time she was in the hospital, she hasn't been back. She will have every now and then a little pain here and there, but we haven't had to take her back in a while. So just keep her in prayer, and we thank you for prayers always. You're always welcome. Amen. And uh, at this time, we just want to make sure everybody was served. Is there anybody here? that okay I think yeah someone's missing over there um, yeah if there's anybody else here that's missing any uh, bread or wine uh, we will go ahead and provide that for you just keep your hands raised so we know where to go raise raise them nice and high now we partake of the communion uh, emblems as the Lord has said.
And at this time, we'll have uh, Sister Jessie come on up and we'll call for an offering. And we'd just like to remind you that um, is th we have a, if you want to give to the Benevolence Fund, you can place it back there in the little box between those two double doors uh, as, you're, as you're heading out. But um, right now, we're just as a regular, a regular offering. Everybody in position. May we come forward, please? Let's pray. Father in heaven, you give your only begotten son to give us life. The perfect sacrifice. And as we don't celebrating life with you, Lord, we ask you that we can worship you with our entire whole. That we give you everything that we have and everything that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
powerful song. What a powerful song that is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now, before we head out, we'd love to end this wonderful service with an anointing of our new brothers and sisters. So if you were baptized today, Rose, um, Jeremiah, Rachel, come on up. We have a special gift for you. We have some gifts we want to give you all. And um, Brother Mike, will, our resident uh, prayer warrior, if you don't know, this guy can move mountains with his prayers. Um, yeah, come, come. If you're an elder, come on up, please. We would like you to be a part of this blessing. If you can't reach them, just touch someone else. The Holy Spirit is conductive, so it works through people. Now we'll have a special anointing by our beloved Pastor Mike. God the Father, Yahweh, God the Holy Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and God the mighty Holy Spirit, the commander of the battle down here. Father, we ask you to touch her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet and drench her in the blood shed on Calvary to protect her. Always keep the mighty warrior angels around her, above her, below her, front, back, left, and right, to take care of her 24 hours a day. Give her a, a mighty dose of the Holy Spirit to guide her in her life for the rest of her life. We give you honor, praise, and glory for her decision today, and we put her totally in your hands. Hashem Yeshua Mashiach, Adonai Sar Shalom. Name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace. Amen. Father, we anoint little Rachel here. In the name of Yahweh, God the Father, Yeshua Mashiach, God the Son, Ruach HaKadosh, the mighty Holy Spirit, wind and fire. You know where this little girl is going to be the rest of her life. I ask you to take care of her also. Send those warrior angels to protect her 24 hours a day, even when she's sleeping, above her, below her, front, back, left, and right. And from what I heard from the baptismal tank, she has a good idea of where she wants to go. So we ask you to lead her, lead her, and guide her Holy Spirit. Never let her get discouraged or go down. We give you honor, praise, and glory for this little child's witness today. Hashem Yeshu Mashiach Adonai Sar Shalom. Name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace. Amen. Maya. Wow. We anoint this young man in the name Yahweh, God the Father, Yeshua, Mashiach, God the Son, Ruach HaKadosh, and mighty Holy Spirit, wind and fire, commander of the battle. Anoint him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And give him what he needs in his life from this moment on. A dose of the Holy Spirit in the early morning hours and through the course of the day. Lead him in the path of righteousness and drench him and cover him in the blood that was shed on Calvary that defeated Satan for all time. And we command you, Satan, to get your hands off of these people up here. The little boy, little girl, and our sister right here. You cannot have these people. You can't have these kids. They're going to the kingdom, and that's where they're going to wind up. All of us here in this sanctuary, anoint all of us today. Holy Spirit, we give you honor. We give you praise. 
and we give you glory. We end our prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hashem, Yeshua, Mashiach, and Anoy, Sar, Shalom. Name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing, when we all get to heaven. We're, we're going to have our song here finally and when you are finally let out we will have our ushers um, lead us out in an organized fashion so <laughs> yeah when we all get to heaven what a glorious day that will be
be with us throughout the rest of this Sabbath day. Remind us, dear Father, to keep the Sabbath day holy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone.
our live stream today. We hope that you are blessed. And we hope that if you are in need of more uplifting content, that you will go over to our media page, plantationsda.tv. If you would like to enter a prayer request or a praise report, we ask you to go over to our church website, plantationsda.org. And if you're ever in the Plantation, Florida area, we encourage you to come on over and worship with us here. Until then, vaya con Dios.